Hi, my name is Pooja Khatri, and I'm a professor of neurology at University of Cincinnati. And it is my distinct pleasure to be interviewing Jim Grata, professor of neurology at UT Houston, um, and have him tell us about his much anticipated trial, the best MSU trial. So, so Jim, thank you. So, uh, you know, Professor Fassbender back uh, over 10 years ago showed that mobile stroke units can speed treatment. And so we know that uh, mobile stroke units, by taking the treatment to the patient, can make treatment faster. And we also know from all the TPA trials that faster treatment results in better outcome. But the real question is, is how much better are we going to make patients by using mobile stroke units? And is it worth, I mean, are we going to make them, to, are we going to speed treatment enough and make patients better enough more patients better, that it's worth the effort of implementing mobile stroke units widely. I always remember that you shared with us and kind of highlighted the point that in the NINDS TPA trials, there were, what, there were two patients treated within the golden hour and they were both in the placebo arm? That's correct. And um, really in, in, in standard emergency management, uh, and, and we found the same thing, only about one or two percent of all patients treated with TPA are treated within that first hour. Um, and what we, our hypothesis was is, and, and, and I'd like to come back to this, is that if we can get patients treated in the first hour with mobile stroke unit, we'll see a substantial increase in, in, in patients completely recovering. Great. Well, tell us about the design then. So it was important, of course, we could not randomize patients on scene because you couldn't, show, we were not allowed to, by our EMS directors to show up on scene with the mobile stroke unit and then not treat a patient uh, using the uh, expertise and the CT scanner and everything else that's on the mobile stroke unit. So what we did was uh, uh, we uh, are dis dispatched at the same time, the same way of a 911 call came in, both on mobile stroke unit weeks and standard management weeks. And, and we'd had weekly allocation, one week alternating the mobile stroke unit was on and the next week the standard management was on. Uh, but on the standard management weeks, the same uh, mobile stroke unit team would be alerted the same way. But instead of uh, going to the scene, we would meet the medical the EMS uh, team at the emergency room door and we would recreate what the patient was like when EMS arrived on scene and we determined whether the patient would be enrolled based on their status when EMS arrived on scene. And then um, we determined their NIH stroke scale score and that resulted in uh, patients in the two groups being exactly identical. When you look at their distribution of NIH stroke scale scores and all the other demographics that determine outcome, they were well matched. And the other other thing we did, because it wasn't a, a um, um, randomized, is that every patient that once they were enrolled in the trial, um, then we had a, a, a vascular neurologist who was blinded to what group the patient was in and blinded as to whether they got TPA treatment, review the chart and determine if this patient was eligible for TPA according to published guidelines. And it was only the TPA eligible patients then that were uh, analyzed as our primary analytic co cohort. So the question is, you know, you know, if if your TPA, if 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 you call nine one one and you're eligible for acute stroke treatment, do you do better if you're managed on a mobile stroke unit? How much better compared to standard management? And it's probably worth mentioning um, what what a mobile stroke unit is for some of our listeners. What what makes that distinct from a, a regular ambulance? Right. So I want to emphasize it's not a. This is not a regular ambulance just with telemedicine on board. And in fact, the, there is a neurologist, a vascular neurologist, either on board or available by telemedicine. And, and in the first part of this trial, we showed, in fact, that whether you're evaluated on the mobile stroke unit in person or by telemedicine by a vascular neurologist, the, the accuracy of the diagnosis and the speed of treatment is the same. Uh, so either way, that could happen. And of course, we have all the medications on board not only TPA, but all of the blood pressure medicines and all the other things we need to do in order to treat the patient. And so when we arrive on scene, uh, we determine is this someone who's 
having a stroke? Are they within the time window for treatment? If so, they get loaded on the mobile stroke unit. They get right there on the scene. While we're stationary, we do the CT scan, determine eligibility, and if they're eligible, we get the treatment started right away there on the scene. Then we transport the patient to the hospital and pre-notify the hospital. Thanks, that, that's helpful. And so what did you show? Well, first of all, um, I think that it's important to mention that we completed the study on time. Uh, we were delayed by COVID uh, and some of our uh, uh, sites, we had seven sites in the study, by the way, across the country. Uh, they gradually came on board over the course of the trial. So most of the patients were enrolled in Houston, but uh, we did have uh, patients enrolled at all the other sites. And what we found was that, um, first of all, we definitely sped up the treatment. 33% of the mobile stroke unit patients were treated in that first hour, compared to only 3% using standard management. Uh, in addition, more patients got, more TPA eligible patients got treated in the mobile stroke unit, on a mobile stroke unit week than on standard management week. It's something like 97% of the patients on mobile stroke unit weeks who are TPA eligible got treated with TPA, whereas only 80% of them on standard management weeks. And I think this reflects the fact that um, sometimes uh, patients, of course, spontaneously recover by the time they reach the emergency department. And uh, I think 3% of standard management patients completely recovered between the time EMS arrived and the time they got to the emergency department. So, of course, they weren't treated, whereas they were treated on the mobile stroke unit because they still had their deficit. But that only accounted for 3%. Um, we also um, um, found that uh, so the other patients that didn't get treated on the standard management weeks were probably because they exceeded the four and a half hour time window because it took longer to get treated or alternatively it just that the ed docs decided not to treat the patient for some reason um but anyway so we did treat more patients we treated them clearly faster and the uh, uh, percentage of patients who ended up completely recovering was um 10 percent more so we had a 10% increase in the percentage of patients achieving a rank and score of zero or one. Now, I'd, I'd point out that 20, remember, we also enrolled patients who had pre existing disability who couldn't even possibly achieve a rank and score of zero or one. So, um, 20 some odd percentage of our patients had a pre existing disability and were enrolled in the trial and couldn't even ever get to zero or one. Uh, we, our primary outcome actually was the utility weighted rank and score, which is uh, basically assigns weights to the rank and score based on a patient's preference. So for instance, the transition from a rank and score of three to four uh, is valued by a patient as much more important because it determines whether a patient can walk independently. That's a uh, weighted more heavily than the transition between a zero and one, which may be just a little bit of numbness in one hand, which isn't really valued as very important to patients. And um, what we found was the difference in the um, uh, utility rated rank and score was 0.07. Now, that doesn't mean anything to most people, but if you look at the NINS trial where TPA was compared to placebo, the differences between the two groups was 0.09. So it was almost as great an effect as was seen in with TPA against placebo. And uh, if you look at the ECAS-3 trial where uh, at the three to four and a half hour group, the utility weighted difference was about 0.03. And uh, so we found a 0.07 to 0.08 difference, which is exactly what we had anticipated. I just have to say that's groundbreaking um, to be able to treat a third of patients within the hour of their symptom onset and to show a greater treatment effect than our than our than our pivotal trials that actually established Alta Place as a, a stroke treatment. So uh, a hearty congratulations to you, Jim. Um, and so uh, I would be interested to know, you know, what you think people should now take home. Some of it might be obvious, but what I'm particularly interested in is if you could give us a preview of your, your cost analyses. Well, of course, the big question is, is, is it worth it? And it's like a lot of things we do in medicine. You know, we know we can, from a scientific standpoint, we know that we can um, achieve a certain endpoint. But 
from a societal standpoint, is it really worth it? And we're all living through that right now. Um, so uh, clearly, if we, if we, and, and the second part of our trial, which is ongoing, is we're measuring all healthcare utilization for a full year after the stroke, and to ter- determine how much. Uh, this improvement in clinical outcome translates to a reduction in the use of, of, of medical care so that we can do a cost-benefit analysis at the end of the day. I can tell you that because we do essentially cure more, more patients and have them achieve a rank and score of zero or one, our length of stay, average length of stay are reduced. I can't tell you exactly how much. And it's it's clear that healthcare utilization is going to be reduced. And I've done a back of the envelope calculation, and that is that if we reverse just five more strokes per year, that the cost of impl- of buying a mobile stroke unit and implementing it uh, would be offset by the reduction in, in cost. So, you know, we, we'll just know, uh, but I, I think it's a no, it's just sort of like the, we knew we were going to get better outcome. We just didn't know how much. I think I know that we're going to reduce downstream costs. The question is by how much, but I mean, to me, I think that we all know, and we, this, this whole meeting is all is being, the whole stroke field is so focused on endovascular therapy, which it should be uh, because it's such a powerful treatment. But I think that we should be spending just as much effort and in getting patients treated with TPA within the first hour as we are in getting thrombectomy patients treated. Uh, you know, it's not an either or situation, but the point is, is this is a very large impact on, on outcomes. And so the cost of, of, um, and, uh, of implementing and putting a mobile stroke unit into operation is worth the effort. And so we just need to take the data that we're going to get from this trial, take it to insurers and make sure that mobile stroke units get uh, reimbursed at the appropriate level so that they can be implemented more widely. Well, congratulations again for bringing us a positive trial that shows us that mobile stroke units do lead to better outcomes. Um, And we'll look forward to the next results that you give us in the future. And in the meantime, um, really just congratulations and thank you for your time.